Today I'll be doing a quick review and giving my overall impression as an average user of the Apple Magic Trackpad 2. So recently my old mouse has started to act up. It's this ancient Alienware Tactics here, which is effectively like a slightly cut down version of the Logitech G9X. I actually won this thing years ago in a YouTube competition of all things run by Ashens, so yeah, it's definitely a bit old. And yeah, the scroll wheel's starting to act up a little bit, it doesn't always scroll when you click it, and it's just getting a bit tired, so I kind of need to replace it. So I plan on just getting a new mouse. However, after using the MacBook quite a lot, I've become quite accustomed to the touchpad gestures for things like swiping between desktops, opening up the window overview thing that I can never remember what it's called, um, scrolling, zooming, all that sort of stuff. And I found that when I was using this old mouse, I was missing out on that. I wasn't, didn't have those gestures, and I kept leaning over to the laptop and using the touchpad on it to do gestures. So when I came to getting a new input device, I was like, well, I'll see what the Apple ones are. So I had the decision between the Magic Mouse or the Magic Trackpad. So I ruled out the Magic Mouse because I kind of want to charge it when I'm using it. Yeah, they still haven't fixed that. So went for the Magic Trackpad. So I planned on getting a new one, but the prices were ridiculous. So it starts at 130 quid, which is a lot, but it's Apple, so whatever, that you sort of have to expect that. But the reason I say starts at 130 quid is because that's for the white one. If you want the space grey one, so it would match my machine, it's 149 quid. So it's 20 quid more just to get a different colour. And I was like, no, I'm not paying more for a nicer colour. So I took a look on eBay, and they were a bit cheaper because you get used ones. So a white one was about 75 quid on eBay used, but even then, the space grey one was about 100 quid used. So even on eBay, for the used ones, the space grey was still more expensive. So I eventually resigned myself just to getting a white one. So I took a look on CEX just to see what the price was, especially since I could go and pick it up that day and I kind of wanted to play with it. And they had a white one listed for 72 quid, so I thought, that's a pretty good deal, it's cheaper than eBay. So I went along to pick it up. And while I was in the shop, they actually had two on the shelf. They had a white one and they had a space grey one, both for 72 quid. So I thought, right, they're charging the same price for space grey. I'll get a space grey one. So here it is. So yep, I got this used, but it's basically mint condition as far as I can tell, and I paid 72 quid for it, which is still quite a lot for a trackpad, but it's a lot cheaper than the new price. So what we'll do is we'll do an unboxing, take a look at it, I'll get it connected up and try it out, I'll then go away and use it for a while, and come back with my impressions. Because I've never really used a trackpad on the desktop. I mean, obviously I've used a laptop plugged into a monitor and used a trackpad on that, but I've never really used a trackpad in place of a mouse. I've always just used a mouse. If I've got my laptop connected up to monitors, keyboard and mouse at my desk, I'll always just use a mouse. I've never thought to use a trackpad. So it'll be really interesting to see how I find this. I've seen the track Magic Trackpads before, but I've never really used one myself. So it'll be quite cool to see what my impressions are. So here's the device. It's, it came in the original box, so it was actually listed in CEX as grade A or whatever because it was fully boxed. So if we take it out and see what we get. And this must be quite new because the Space Grey was only introduced fairly recently. It was introduced this year. And on the back as well, I think it lists the copyright date as being year 2018. So it is actually a fairly new device. So I don't know if it's maybe someone just bought it and didn't like it and then sold it at a massive loss or something. That's all I could really guess. So here it is here. Typical Apple thing with a wee lifty up bit. So there's a trackpad we'll take a look at later. Then all we get is some bits of paperwork, which I do not need to read, probably. And a lightning cable. So... They've used Lightning rather than like USB-C or something, but I mean, I suppose that vaguely makes sense because if you're an Apple user and you're you know more of an Apple user than me and you've got an iPhone as well, you'll probably already have a Lightning cable sitting on your desk for your phone. So it kind of makes sense to use the Lightning on it. For me, it's not as convenient because I don't have an iPhone, so I will have to use this cable separately for it. But I suppose with the average sort of hardcore Apple user, this does make sense. And it is black, which is nice. I don't know if that's maybe an aftermarket cable, although I'm guessing it's maybe because it's a space grey touchpad it comes with the black cable. I wonder if that's what makes the 20 quid difference. I don't know. So yeah, that's the cable you get there. Now if we take a look at the trackpad itself, it's in the original sort of wrap. It has been used, but I think it's been sealed up again. Well, actually, interestingly on the back, there's like cutouts in the plastic for the lightning connector and the switch. So I don't know what they're expecting people to be, why they're expecting this to be connected while it's sealed. I don't know if it was just for testing or I've got no idea. But anyway, take it out. And there's the device. So it's pretty much mint condition. In fact, it is absolutely mint condition. I I looked at it in the shop and I genuinely cannot see any marks, not apart from like fingerprints. So it is really good condition. So you got the top of it there is all space grey, as are the sides. It's force touch, so it doesn't actually click down normally. It uses the haptic feedback, so it'll only do that when I switch it on. In fact, if I switch it on there. Yep, 
I can now feel it clicking, so that's quite cool. And then you can see on the back there you've got the switch, lightning connector, and then this little plastic piece here, which I'm guessing must just be for the antenna. It's not like an indicator or anything, I think it's just for the antenna so it can work through the metal. So yep, that's the device there. Now when I was buying this, I also toyed with the idea of getting the older generation because it was so much cheaper. But in the end, this new model does seem quite a big improvement. So it's a much larger area. You can see in comparison to my hand, it's huge. It's about the same size as the one on the new MacBook Pro. However, the other difference is it's got all the force touch stuff, which is good as well. But it's just the way that the mechanism works. So on the, this one, you click the touchpad down anywhere and it actually clicks. And this means that if you're holding it in your hand, you can still actually click it. It just works like a portable touchpad, really. The old Magic Trackpad didn't do that. Instead, on the old Magic Trackpad, at the front, you had like two little feet layer in there, and those were the actual buttons. So you had to lay it on a table, and when you push the touchpad down, those buttons pressed in against the table and it detected a click. The problem with that was that if you weren't using it on a hard surface, so if you weren't using it on a table, you're maybe holding it in your hand or had it on the arm of a couch, or potentially even on like a desk that had one of those sort of full desk mouse mats that makes the desk surface quite soft, it wouldn't work on those. So this model is a definite improvement from that perspective as well. So now let's get this thing working. So I think you can pair it manually through the Bluetooth settings. However, one of the reviews stated that you can actually pair it by just plugging it in. So I'll try that because that's quite cool. So we can just plug it in. The touchpad's already switched on. And unlike the Magic Mouse, you can actually plug it in just straight while it's being used. You don't have to you know, turn it upside down like the mouse, Apple. And now if we just oh, dongle, so if we wake the laptop up again, and then plug it into the dongle, Apple, and then plug the dongle into the laptop. In theory, that should cause it to pair. Yep, there we go. So in the corner of the screen, it's now popped up saying Magic Trackpad 2. Your trackpad is wirelessly connected to your Mac. So in theory, yep, that's it working. So, I mean, if you, if you know the dongle issue, that's actually quite slick, just being able to plug it in and pair it instantly without having to explain to people to go into Bluetooth settings and pair and all that sort of stuff. The average user getting this can just plug it straight in, switch it on, and it'll work. And in theory, if I were to unplug that cable, it continues to work, yep, and it pops up saying connected. So now if we go into Bluetooth settings, we can hopefully see it, so down to settings, Bluetooth, and yep, that's it showing up there as admin's trackpad. I wonder if it's just, I wonder if it names it after the user that set it up for the first time, so it's named after someone else. Don't know if you can, oh, you can rename it. Okay, so rename, and I will put my name in. Cool, that's quite cool, you can rename the devices. Rename, there we go. And the battery's quite low, but it works for now. So yep, that's all connected and working. So what I'll now do is I'll go and put it on my desk, get it set up, and just use it for a couple of weeks, just get a bit of experience with it. And then I'll come back and give my impressions when I'm done. So I've now been using the Magic Trackpad for a few weeks, so I can give my impression on it. And overall it's pretty good. Definitely takes a bit of getting used to, there was quite a long period of time of me sort of using it and then my finger thumping off the edge of it when I forgot there was like a actual limit to the edge of it. But now I'm used to it, it works pretty well. And overall for gestures it's absolutely brilliant. So it's things like being able to swipe between desktops or showing mission control or showing launch pad or going out to the desktop is really good. And also things like scrolling, just it's just really nice because it's the exact same gestures you use on the laptop itself and I'm now able to bring those gestures to the desktop. I don't really have any major complaints about it. it. The only real one that I can really think of is that it takes a really long time to connect to the computer when you switch it on. So when you, you've got it switched off at the back and you turn it on, you could be waiting anywhere for like an, up until like a minute for it to actually connect to the computer, which is really annoying. However, I've just started leaving it switched on and it actually seems to be fine. It doesn't seem to drain the battery down. And even if I'm using the laptop in a completely different room, it will, the laptop will show that it's connected to the trackpad, but the battery still lasts fine. When I got it, it had a pretty low charge, and I've only had to charge it like once, and it, it only died very recently. So it lasts for a very long time on battery, so I'm not really too worried about it. And of course, unlike the Magic Mouse, you can actually charge it when you're using it, so the battery life really isn't a problem at all. It's also been really reliable, there's been no random disconnections or anything I was slightly worried about with Bluetooth devices. So yeah, it actually works really well. The only other really minor complaint, which is just something I didn't really think about, is that the surface can get quite cold. Now that's probably more of an issue here because I'm in Scotland and it is generally quite cold here. And if I've been out at work and I come in and the flat's cold, 
using the touchpad can always be like uncomfortably cold to put your finger on. You don't really have that issue with the machine itself because the machine itself gets hot so the trackpad warms up and it feels fairly, not warm, but like room temperature. But the trackpad can get a little bit cold. So, I mean, it's it's a minor issue, but it's just something I noticed. But yeah, it's really good. I've been using it sort of as my daily pointing device and it works brilliantly. However, I've thrown a slight spanner in the works because on Cyber Monday, Amazon had the Logitech MX Master Mouse on sale for 37 quid, which is a massive saving. So I ended up buying one as well. So I use the MX Master at work and I absolutely love it. I've had it for a couple of years now. But since I use my PC at work way more than I use mine at home, it made sense to take it into work and use it there. So I ended up buying a second one for home use. But this now leaves me with a dilemma because I've got the Magic Trackpad and now a really nice mouse. And I kind of like them both, but almost for different things. So I've actually found myself sitting with them both sort of side by side, using the mouse for most of my pointing stuff and then using the trackpad for gestures, which works, it's just a bit weird. I almost find that you have two different sort of moods when I'm using stuff. If I'm coming home from work where I've been using a mouse all day and I want to do some serious work here, I'll probably end up using the MX Master more. If I'm having a sort of just lazy day just mucking about online just not really doing anything productive, or I've been sitting on the laptop for an extended period of time using the touchpad, when I come through to my desk I feel much more inclined to use the trackpad. So I'm now finding myself flitting between the two. The MX Master also does do a lot of the gestures, so things like switching between desktops, you can sort of hold this little thumb button down and swipe and it will do them. Same with even Mission Control, you can do that. But it's not nearly as nice as on the trackpad. So at, the, at this point in time, I'm almost using the trackpad as like a gesture surface or just for lazy playing about. And then I'm using the mouse for more serious pointing use, which is a bit weird, but it sort of does work. So now for a tricky question. If I could only have one of these devices, which one would I keep? It's been quite a hard decision, but I think I would probably rather have just the MX Master rather than just the trackpad. For extended periods of use, it's just a little bit more comfortable and it's really good for precision work. However, I think I would really miss the trackpad if I didn't have it. Just being able to use it for things like gestures or scrolling or things like zooming, stuff like that. It's just, it's just really nice having it there. So if before buying the Magic Trackpad I'd already had the MX Master, I'd have probably been less inclined to go out and get the Magic Trackpad. However, having the two together does work quite well. What I think I'll just need to do is over time I'll just try using them both together because I've only had the, the MX Master for a few days. I'll just use them both together and see how I get on. If I find that I'm never using the trackpad I could always flog it on eBay and actually get more than I paid for it. But at this point in time I'm actually finding having both of them side by side to work quite well. So there you go, that was my sort of impressions of the Magic Trackpad as just a general user who's just gone out and bought one and tried it out for fairly day to day average tasks. So yeah, thank you very much for watching.